Virgil Ortiz Sr., your son just had a tremendous fight against Maurice Hooker. He was more of a live dog than I think a lot of people expected. Mm -hmm. What is your take on, on tonight's fight? Uh, my son did a good job. He, uh, he went and did what he was supposed to do and, uh, you know, stuff that we worked on and, and you know, for, for this fight. Um, but I, I, I was impressed with my son. I'm always impressed with my son. I just don't really like to tell him too much because, you know, you don't want him getting used to, you know, you want him working hard. Or, you know, it's just the way it is. Like, oh, that's how I work. But, uh, no, he, he, he did very good. Uh, he kept poised. Uh, he knew that uh, Maurice was going to, you know, there was going to be times when he was going to come out to pro, you know, to, to stand his ground. And, uh, but, you know, my... I always tell my son that when you're in there, you own the ring. That's your ring. You 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 take it how you want to take it. If you want to walk him down, walk him down. If you want if you want to follow him for a bit, follow him for a bit. I mean, let, you know, and then switch things up. But uh, I, I think he did a very good job. Now you talk about giving him freedom in the ring for him to make his own choices. He is very vocal about wanting Crawford next. He said he doesn't care. If he's not. People think he's not ready yet. That he wants that. Are you behind him on that? Look, I. I personally, as a father, as a father, I would like maybe another one. Just, 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 uh, you know, it's just like insurance in your car. You know, you can drive, but you get it anyways, right? Just because you, you do it. Um, I'm comforting my son, but if, if, if that's what comes, then we're not going to shy away from it. I mean, all, every fight that my son has fought, we don't pick him. That's the first thing they give him, and that's fine. You know, we don't, we don't ask. Some, my fact, we didn't even know we were fighting Hooker on this fight. They knew they were fighting us, and we didn't even know. We even asked them for sparring, and of course they didn't respond, and it turned out to be we were fighting them. I was like, okay, well that's fine. I guess that's what it is. But uh, you know, if he wants to go, if they want to put him against uh, Terrence, for, I get it. He's young. People are thinking of Fernando Vargas, Trinidad, that example. That's, that's the that, exact same that, reference that, I saw that, on Twitter. That, that's what yeah. they're saying. But my son isn't Fernando. Uh, Crawford isn't Trinidad. I'm not saying he's not as good as him or as strong. It's two different fights, two different eras. My son, I always said, my son's ahead of his time. He, there's no one stronger than my son at 147. I, I, I'm upset if it's 140, no one's stronger than 140, no one's stronger than 147. My son's a different kid. They can say he don't have experience. Yeah, he does. In the ring, he has a lot of experience. Maybe not pro ring wise, he takes everybody out, but in the ring, Sparring, he was sparring to us. He has a lot of experience. He probably has more experience than most of these pro fighters because my son spars almost every day. And the, and the good thing about it is he don't take beatings. He knows how to take care of it. It's, it's different. It's, it's a different way with the way we teach him. Now he does have the WBA gold, and this is for the WBO. You know, kind of to get up. He's number one, right? In term, uh, I think he's number one or number two. Yeah. If you guys had to choose between, let's say, maybe uh, Ugas, who just got the WBA handed to him because of Manny Pacquiao, by, like, leaving it, or Crawford, is there a preference you guys would have, or do you still have that mentality of whoever they give you? It's whoever they give us, really. Uh, I probably would probably, I probably would rather go against Crawford, because I, I like Crawford. Uh, uh, as, a, as a person, I like him, but Ugas, I like him, like, I like him. He, he uh, I, I caught him for sparring. And uh, actually, I texted him for sparring, and he actually called me on FaceTime because he wanted to meet me because he's never met me out of respect. That that for me uh, uh, in Spanish me cae muy bien. Sí. I, I really like that. Habla bien de él. And that's a gentleman right there. Um, that and then uh, you know he he uh, earned his belt the hard way, even though it, he was kind of up to it. But technically, he should have been a world champion against Porter. Porter, yeah. So you know, uh, I, I just like him and uh and Crawford I like him too but I think Crawford's the man at 147 and uh why not beat the man at 147 for the belt I mean that's that's, that's what you want to do you want to beat the man at 147 that, that's how you do it now Crawford said he ha he's you know looking for better things in his words Keith Thurman says he called your son the kid and that he's not too familiar with him what do you think it's going to take for Virgil to do to get the attention of these, you know, bigger fighters other than Errol Spence because Errol Spence basically grew up in the same gym with him. So what does Virgil have to do? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I mean, um, for, you know, I don't knock on Crawford for saying that he has better things for Maybe better things for him as in like, like, uh, and making more money in, in another way for himself or because he's at the end of his he's, he's almost on his way out you can say it how you want to say it. he is uh 
Uh, so maybe it would benefit them to make more money, whatever. So I'm not gonna knock them on that or whatever. And then uh, Keith Thurman can say my boy's a little kid, but I guarantee you, uh, Virgil flatlines Keith Thurman. Uh, and and uh, that, that's that's just the truth. Um, that that's just you know. And then with Earl, you know, you know he, he might he's up there. He might have a different plan. Everybody has their own road. I can't knock on them on that. The only thing we can do is stay ready, do what we do, because eventually some of these guys are gonna have to face. It. I mean, obviously they're not facing each other. So if they're not facing each other, then there's one guy that'll face you. But uh, you know, really, I, I would, you know, I, I would, I would like to like one more fight for, you know, I guess you want to say a warm up or whatever for Crawford, and I would take Keith Thurman. I, I, I don't consider that a some fight that's gonna scare scare me to put him. I'd put him in in a week right now against him. Now there's a you know the boxing politics of the PBC and they don't fight outside of their stable most of the time. Is that something you're worried about, knowing that Virgil is a welterweight? No, because those guys are on their way out. Those guys can only hold those belt hostages for so long. And there's such thing as mandatory. And once he's up there and he's knocking and knocking and, and you have to fight, vacate it or fight him. And by the time that happens, my son's going to be so mature and older that what are you going to do now when he's too strong for you? What are you going to do now that he, he, he's a, his level thinking is probably higher than yours because it's probably about the same right now at his age. What are you going to do then? You either give up a belt or end up like what happened today. This is the only thing that I see happening. No. And that's not shit talking. That's just me being honest. Yeah. You know. I asked Virgil the same thing. I, a name that keeps coming up with uh, Virgil is Boots Ennis. Who? And Boots. Oh. Who's fighting Lipinets, right? I think mm -hmm. it's because they're both young, they're both up and comers, they're both got ridiculous knockouts. Is that a name that you guys would rather wait for to marinate or kind of just be like, oh, let's see who kind of makes it out of this to get to the top, guys? No, look. With, with that, those are two young kids that are coming up that nobody's wanting to fight them. You know, I've always said this, you know, if they were to offer the fight, the next fight, we would take it. It's not a problem, we would take it. There's nothing that we haven't seen. We've seen guys that, that fight lefty, righty, move around, you know. My son does good with everybody. Uh, that kid, the, and this is a good fighter. Uh, you know, he's, he's a very good, but of course we're confident in my son. But why, why are you gonna, I always think it, when I read some of these things where Virgil and Ennis should fight each other and then whoever fights each other should, should get Crawford or Earl, I think that's pussy shit. And I'm going to tell you why. Because you're letting these, these two guys against each other so that way you don't have to worry about them. That's all, that's all they're doing. How about you motherfuckers either fight each other or fight one of these guys and that's just the way it is. But that's just another way of trying to let them eliminate each other. So that way they don't really have to worry about them. That's what they're doing. That's all. Or if, if that's what people are writing, that's what the, that's what they're saying without realizing it. So. Now going back on Virgil's performance tonight, what do you think was his best asset, and what do you think it's something you guys need to go back and work on in the gym? I I think uh, his best asset was that he was patient the whole way, like he always is. Uh, he stuck to the game plan uh, no matter what. He knew that he was going to be in a little bit of fire, you know. Uh, I, I don't really. Some people can say that uh, uh, he might have sat out a little bit too long and stuff like this. But I, I, I'll say this, and I can say now that the fight's already done. You know, people don't know this, but Virgil had COVID. Me and Virgil had COVID. We had COVID, uh, not right now, but we had COVID uh, in uh, mid, uh, mid February. And we were fucking dying. We, the, we, were, had a, we had it bad for like three weeks, and I've never, I've never experienced anything that like that. It makes you feel like you're there, but you're not there. Uh, you couldn't taste, smell, or even feel food in your mouth. Why didn't you guys say anything? We could, well, we, because we, I mean, my son wanted a fight, and uh, I wanted to wait till to see if he was gonna, if, if we even had a, you know, my my, my son's percentage, a sixty percent, seventy percent strength, is just as good as anybody else. That's how strong he is. So, uh, you know, he was sick, and uh, we were sick, and fuck, man, I, I thought we were fucking dying. And uh, we didn't tell nobody. And I, I mean, obviously, we we tested positive and this and that. And, and we had to take a bunch of fucking crazy pills and uh, to try to make you better. And, and man, it, it, it's just fucking crazy. But long story short, you know, my son had a rough camp. And this is a, this is what you're seeing. 
him being rough. Wait till he gets. Wait till he's he's back to normal. And uh, but anyways, you know that pass and uh, but then you got like you're sick those times, and then whenever the three weeks come, you feel better, you feel good, but you're really not good. You just feel better because you're not fucking dying. And then you got to try to recover, and then you got to try to put yourself in timing for the you know for the last two weeks, two weeks. And then you gotta hit weight again, so your body hasn't had no time to, to recover at all. And uh, but you, a lot of, I mean, some of these guys that have got COVID and fought, they lost, lost and yeah. got knocked out. They fought, and, and Virgil is the exception because he, he's different. Uh, but if he was, if, if I felt that he wasn't, you know, I would have never put him. Yeah. Okay. Lastly, just and I know you went off on people on Twitter. Oh yeah. Over over straight. yeah over your son uh, missing weight. Obviously they. They're calling him now an overweight welterweight. Yeah, yeah. They're being really critical of him. Message to them, not just on Twitter, just in general, about oh. how they're reacting to your son uh, missing all, weight. All those people that are talking about, you know, that my son, uh, he's overweight. Go lift, go look in the mirror and lift your shirt up, and then see who the fuck's overweight. My son, my son misses misses these last few weights by ounces, not fucking pounds, ounces. If he couldn't think about this, if he couldn't make weight, and we knew he was overweight, you think we're gonna sit here, take him in front of public, not make weight, just to leave and go make weight and come back? That's fucking stupid. Like, so he can not eat another fucking hour or whatever? The first time, you know, or the, we have our scale, our personal scale. How about a fucking $800 fucking scale? And I brought it, and I put it next to it, we met, we, we weighed them, they both weighed the same, exactly the same. Took it upstairs, you know, we used it, we used it, we were on point, came back, we were three ounces off on the official scale. So, I mean, that, that was that. On, on this one, we said, all right, we learned our lesson, let's get a scale exactly the same model, the same everything, everything like maybe that like one. three four scales just to the, jump the, from the one same to the other one, you get the same one but people don't understand this a skill can be can, you know because you calibrate them right they can get off an inch by this look setting it down because it's so sensitive the, the sensors are so sensitive so if you do that you you can you throw it off it's just like a car when you drive a car and you hit a little bump you don't really feel it but your your uh, uh, suspension turns a little bit, and your, that's why your steering wheels are a little bit sideways. You have to get them again. You know, you have to take them again to, to, to get them fixed. It's the same shit with the scale. A scale if it gets bumped so many times on the plane and all that, and the luggage, that's what happens. People don't, so a few ounces, that tells you. You know, for somebody to say he's on discipline, they can go fuck themselves. And it's true. But you know, people, you gotta use your fucking brain. I mean, like, we're not here to come in over ounces, a few ounces over, and then go over there and then make the weight and then come back. This shit don't make no sense. Sometimes you just have to actually pull your head out of your ass and actually fucking think about it. All right, you heard it here first. <laughs>